All right, what's up guys? Mrs. Rebelli here, back with another video that's going to be kind of two videos because I'm doing volume of prisms and of pyramids uh, at the same time because they're pretty closely related to each other. Okay, so a quick reminder of the things that we have measured so far. So we've done perimeter and area so far. So perimeter is a one dimensional measure. So if you're measuring it, it's in inches because it's how many inches from here to here, like a ruler. Area is in inches squared. So that means how many little squares of one inch by one inch, how many one inch by one inch squares can you fit inside of a figure? Like, yeah, how many one inch by one inch squares can you fit in here, I guess? So let's say you had this square right here. Perimeter would be the length around this. So if this was four inches, which I'm pretty sure it is, it's four inches, four, 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 and four, the perimeter would be, would be 16 inches. If it's area, that's how many one inch by one inch squares can fit in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there would be 16. So it's, that's just a coincidence in a way. Um, but yeah, 16 square inches. So now we're talking about volume. So volume is if you had a box that was four inches by four inches by four inches, how many one inch by one inch by one inch cubes can you fit in here? All right, so for this cube, if I had a bunch of little one inch by one inch by one inch cubes, I could fit 64 of them into this four by four by four box, okay? So that's what volume means. Perimeter is in like, let's say inches. Area is in squares. How many squares can you fit in? And volume is in cubes. How many cubes can you fit in here? And then let's kind of talk a little bit about um, the kind of shapes we're going to look at today. So like I said, we're gonna do prisms. So prism is a closed figure, three, closed three-dimensional figure. I'll put the actual definition up here. Um, so this is a rectangular prism. So a prism is named by its bases. So you could say there's a rectangle on top and bottom and all around it are other rectangles. You're thinking, oh, this all, they're all rectangles. So here, this would be a triangular prism because you have a triangle here and here and all the other faces are rectangles. So that's what a prism is, okay? Another example would be this. This is a hexagonal prism. You have a hexagon here and here and then a bunch of rectangles connecting them. We're gonna do volume of those. We're also gonna do volume of pyramids. So a pyramid, like what you're used to seeing in Egypt, um, they're also named by the base. So you can have a rectangular pyramid, triangular pyramid. So here, this is a rectangular prism, also technically a cube. This is a rectangular pyramid. So you're naming it by the base and it only has one base instead of two and they meet at a point. So. Like I showed you, this is a hexagonal prism. This is a hexagonal pyramid. Same base, hexagon, they fit on each other, but instead of meeting the here and here, there are two of them. There's only one hexagon and they meet at a point. And their faces are going to be little triangles, or triangles. Whereas a prism, you have two shapes and they're connected by rectangles, okay? Rectangular prisms, they're all rectangles, but you can also have triangular prisms like this as well, where it's a triangle, triangle, and rectangles on the sides, okay? And there are also cones and cylinders, but we're not gonna get into that today. So to find the volume of something, you find the base area, so you have this, you find the area of the base. So for the rectangular prism, it doesn't really matter what the base is because they're all rectangles. So we could say this is a base, so we could just one of the bases the bottom face, okay? Let's say the bottom face. What is the area of this times the altitude? And we're just calling it the altitude because sometimes height is used when you're solving for a triangle, right? So altitude is how far apart are the bases? So area of the base, so this is a square, and how far apart are the bases? So from here to here, how long is this? So if this was, all right, if this was two inches, by two inches, the area of this base would be four. 
to find the volume, you would take the area of the base 4 multiplied by the altitude. The altitude of this would be 4. So this would be 4 times 4, which is 16. So 16 cubic inches. So that means a cube 1 inch by 1 inch by 1 inch, there you could fit 16 of them in this thing. Same goes for a triangular prism. If you have a triangular prism like this, you look at the bases. The bases are the triangles. Find the area of the triangle. So that's why we call it an altitude, because right here, when you find the uh, area of a triangle, it's one half base times height. So one half base times the height, right? you find the area of that, and then multiply how far apart are the triangles. So in this case, it would be four. I'm not exactly sure what the measurements of this exact thing are, but um, we're gonna do some examples on this anyway. So those are the volume of prisms first. So we're gonna do prisms, and then we're gonna move on to pyramids in a little bit. Volume is base area times the altitude. A lot of people, uh, if you haven't done this in a long time, if you talk to people in high school, uh, they remember volume is you just multiply all the sides. That's true for rectangular prisms. That's not exactly true for anything else. If you have a rectangular prism, yes, you multiply the length, the width, and the height, or the altitude in this case. Let's move on with some examples here. So as you can see here, length times width times altitude for a rectangular prism, for a triangular prism, to find the area of the triangle, and then multiply it by how far apart they are. All right, find the volume of the rectangular prism. Very straightforward, this is five by four by three. So the volume is the base area times the altitude. For rectangular prisms, we don't really have to do this, but I'll show you just, just because. The base area, let's say the base is this right here, okay? The base area is five times four times the altitude is how far apart the bases are, times three. So it's going to be 20 times three, which gives you 60, and then don't forget the unit. This is centimeters cubed, not squared. Yeah, you have to be very careful when you're dealing with um, these that you're not multiplying the wrong things, because sometimes they'll give you extra dimensions, like three here and four here and five here. You don't multiply everything you see. You multiply the length, the width, and then the altitude or the height. Let's move on to triangular prism. Let's get a little more um, difficult here. So again, you find the base area, so the area of the triangle, and multiply it by the altitude, how far apart the triangles are. So here we have find the volume. So we have to find volume is the base area times the altitude. Okay, so here, when you have a prism, you have to find the bases. So in this case, the base, the bases are those triangles. So find the area of the triangles. So area of the triangle is one half base times height times the altitude then. Okay, so the base and height of, the, of a triangle are perpendicular to each, to each other, so six and eight. So one half times six times eight, and then finally times the altitude, how far apart are the triangles? They're nine feet apart. So you have 216 cubic feet. Okay, another quick one here. Um, you have a different looking triangular prism. So volume equals base area times altitude. So one half base times height times the altitude. So base and height are perpendicular to each other. Um, we'll assume that, and this is a triangular prism. So one half times the base and height are seven and nine times the altitude, which is 10. 315 cubic meters or meters cubed. Okay, kind of a practical application of volume, like when you're storing things. So you want to find out how much stuff you can fit inside a box. Because sometimes if you get things from Amazon or something, you'll get a giant cube. Sometimes it'll be a very flat box. Sometimes it'll be something else. So actually, if it's a giant flat box, you can't hold that much volume inside of it. Um, but if it's a bigger box that's maybe like not as wide, you can actually hold more volume in it. So this, how, which lunchbox holds more food, by looking at it, you can't exactly tell right away because this is smaller than this dimension, but 10 inches is actually bigger than 9.5 inches. So it's very hard to see which lunchbox holds more just right away. So that you can actually find the volume of both of them. So volume of A, uh, area, volume of lunchbox B is going to be technically I could actually ignore 3.75 but I won't, I'll follow the volume for both of these. Okay so for B it's going to be 285 
cubic inches. And then for A, it's going to be 281.25 cubic inches. So that means lunchbox B holds slightly more food than lunchbox A. Okay, back to pyramids. So remember, pyramid has one base and lines that meet up at the top and the, face, the other faces are triangles. So another thing that I talked about, so face is these flat shapes here. And then lateral face means uh, the face of a side, so not the base. So this is the base, and th these are lateral faces, the faces on the side. So volume of a pyramid is actually really interesting. I want you to think about that for a little bit before I actually show you what it is. So compared to a cube that's four by four by four, how much, how do you think it compares to a pyramid that's four by four and the height from the tip to the base is also four. So how do you think that compares? You think it's, you think this is half? You think it's more than a half, less than a half? How much do you think it compares to this? Okay, I'll let you think about that. And then I'm actually gonna do a demonstration in a little bit. Uh, I'll probably just cut to that now. Okay, so I did just say I wanted to explain the relationship between the volume of a rectangular prism compared to the volume of a rectangular pyramid. Everything else is the same. All the dimensions are the same, except one is a pyramid, one is a pyramid, and one is a prism. So this is four by four by four. So four inches high. This right here is four by four. And then from the bottom to the vertex or the apex is four uh, inches as well. So how do these two compare? So a lot of times I get like it's half, it would be half the volume. Sometimes it's less than that, sometimes more. But if you've already seen this before, you would know that the volume of this is one third the volume of this. So if all things are the same, all the, uh, the base, basically if the bases are the same and the altitude is the same, uh, but one is a prism, one is a pyramid, then it is one third. So that means this holds three times as much as this. So how am I gonna prove that? Well, I took off the bottoms of these. I thought that they were meant to be taken off, but I guess not, because it's kind of broken. Oh well, don't tell anyone. So uh, if you don't believe me that there are three, so I will pour water into this three times and it should fill this up. So let's see, I'm probably gonna, that's why I'm outside, I'm probably gonna spill some stuff here. Hopefully this is, I didn't even try this before yet, so we'll see. So, so that's one, and then you can see that there, oh, it's spilling. I can't fill it up all the way to the edge because this thing broke, but we'll assume. All right, so there's one, that's one. If you can see in here, you can see in here, that's not filled up very much. Next one. Ooh, that's two. And you can see that's filled up so so. Two thirds. That's for sure two thirds. And then finally. And that's all of it. And it looks like it's not all the way, but that's because. I kind of broke it right here. So if I did uh, three more of these areas here, it would fill up exact, exactly one of these. Then I ran out of water, I guess, whatever. In that case, this is four by four by four by four. This cube holds 64 cubic inches of water, okay? And I'll put uh, what the equivalent of that is um, on the screen somewhere here. So but yeah. Basically, any pyramid is has one third the volume of its prism counterpart with all the same um, measurements. So yeah, I brought a couple more here. Uh, I tried to do the same with this triangular prism and triangular pyramid, but uh, kind of broke. Oh well, what are you gonna do? So yeah, this is one third the volume of this. They're friends over here, yeah. One third here. Uh, this is a hexagonal 
pyramid, it's one third the volume of this hexagonal prism. One third, so put them next to each other, next to each other, right? And this is a pentagonal prism. This is three times the volume of this pentagonal pyramid, pentagonal pyramid, right? So, there we go. Hopefully that was helpful. Back to you past Mr. Fabella and to present Mr. Fabella splice this in during editing. Good job, buddy. All right, let's go. Okay, so hopefully you like that demonstration. Okay, so volume of a pyramid is actually one third of the base area times height. So, so this pyramid can fit one third the amount this does. It's one third. So basically it's the exact same thing. You're not learning a new formula exactly. You just find the volume of a pyramid with the same dimensions and at the very end, you multiply by one third, or easier for you guys, divide by three. Okay, so here we have a triangular pyramid. We know that the volume of this pyramid is one third base area times the altitude. And the book says base times height, but it's confusing with a triangle. So I'll rewrite this here. This is one third times the area of this base. So the base would be this triangle over here. That is one half. 8.1 times 6.4. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. And then don't forget the altitude. The altitude is from the tip over here down to the base, perpendicular. Okay, so that would be 11. So that's the hard part. Multiplying it out, you can use the calculator. Um, knowing how to use the formula, that's the hard part. So this would be 95.04, which it says round to the nearest tenth, so we're going to round that to 95.0. And that's in a volume, so it's in meters cubed. Okay, so this is um, a more challenging problem here. It's actually giving you the volume, and it wants you to find the height. So that's, that looks pretty challenging, but you, we can do this. So I have to find out what the base is. So the base, the bottom right there, that's a rectangle. My volume is going to be one third of the base area, which is the rectangle, so which is five times 11 times the altitude. But we don't know the altitude, it's H. And we actually do know the volume. It's 110 cubic centimeters. So that's gonna go here. So I'll just rewrite that whole thing. Volume, which is 110 equals one third times five times 11 times H. Okay, so I'm gonna actually keep this as a fraction. 1 third times 5 times 11 is 55 over 3 H, and this is 110. Okay, so now to find, to solve for H when there's a fraction as a coefficient, if you remember, you multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of that is going to be 3 over 55. So I can do some cross-canceling. If I do that, that's actually 2 uh, and 1, and 3 times 2 is 6. So my height is going to be 6 centimeters, not centimeters squared or cubed. We're talking about how tall it is. We're just, it's a one dimensional measure. So it's just six centimeters. All right, so that's it for volume of prisms and pyramids. Hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.